Pyramid Key, the Power Key. Boy, been invited to a pirate ball and need an outfit. A pirate with a ball. Needs an outfit. So, so generally that's a formal event that you'll want to be a little bit fancy. So I'm going to suggest that um, we look at this outfit, which is the pirate court outfit. And it, it is a, a nice fancy outfit that allows you to dance and have fun. It can be worn by itself or with a coat. So let's go over here and take a look at each piece. So the first piece we're going to look at is the court waistcoat. And as you can see, I don't know if you can, yes. this is a black damask fabric. This is actually cotton damask, which is extremely rare in our times because almost everything has gone uh, polyester. You know, so this will breathe even in the heat, and it is uh, it is lined with a cotton linen fabric that breathes very well. Comes in four different options: black with the silver uh, trim or braiding, gold. and gold. That is, this uh, is very durable and can be washed many times without it flaking off. And then. For those that like silver, we have a silver version against the black damask. And then we have this burgundy with the gold, with the shiny uh, brass buttons. And then the royal with the silver, very regal. So, sir, one of these four colors is it that you like? Oh. I actually like to try that blue one. The blue one. I think you're probably uh, large, so right. we will start with that. Oh, well, and actually, let's talk about this waistcoat. So, you see this waistcoat is very long, it goes almost to your knees. And this is appropriate for the 1700s Golden Age pirate look. You see that we have these pockets that are real pockets, but they're set low so that you can wear a sash and still get to your pockets. And that they do button through the buttonhole, like so. And then in the back, you see the, there's a vent back so that those successful pirates that have become a little portly can expand uh, into their outfit. And then you see the back buttonholes along the back. So this is a very nice, lightweight outfit that is very becoming of a gentleman item. So that is the first item. And the second item we have is the fancy court shirt. So it comes in black or white. And this is made of that cotton linen blend that is very breathable. You see it's got a segmented sleeve with buttons, right? So that uh, you have one that's there at your wrist and this one goes above your elbow and this one can go above your, so you see this segmentation and you got that lace right there. This is as a separate piece, this is a jabot that you tie around your neck and it's got the fancy lace and three different segments. Right? And then there's a little buttonhole in the back that you will button through there. So, white or black? I actually try the black one. And the next is your pants or your breeches. So what we recommend is um, what we call the buccaneer breeches, sometimes called the fancy pants, because it has the nice racing stripe 
with the um, riveted buttons. It has uh, five buttons in the front and a tie around the cap and then an adjustable uh, gusset in the back. It comes in a multitude of colors, the black and the gold, or the black and the pewter, the black and the burgundy, and the black with the red, or the blue, which I think probably the blue would match your outfit. Yeah, black and blue outfit. So we're going to take these three pieces and go to the dressing room. And it's probably time for another pirate show. What do pirates wear in the winter? What do pirates wear in the winter, Captain? Long johns. Shit! Oh, so, we have a question from Mr. Sebastian. He wants to know about our belaying pins and how to wield them. Okay. So, a belaying pin is an instrument that is part of the ship. Now, when you would have a line going up and you had the hull on it, you needed, oh, like right here. Yeah. See, here's the, for this ship, there's one here. And then you would tie it around the belaying pin, sort of like this, and then it would hold fast. But when the wind pulls taut, it would be very hard to pull it out. So pull back a bit. All right. So when you needed to release the line, you would just pull the belaying pin out and the line would go off. So. In a fight, and you didn't have any weapons, you can just pull a belaying pin and use it as a club, you know? And it could then just be stuck in your belt. It's a common tool for press gangs that would go and recruit sailors that were already drunk in a tavern, and they just pop them in the head and drag them to this ship. So then, if you were going to grip it, show them how you would grip it. Well, you can grip it two ways. You can do it the standard like this, like you're wielding a sword, or you can reverse grip it, even though this is better like if you're choking while if you were bashing here. But you could flip it here with a larger head to get more even weight into it. So there are many ways to wield it. You know, so in the front, if you want to be, uh, uh, you want to show your weapon, or if you were trying to be more discreet when you go into the cavern, you would put it in the back, right? And then pull it from the back. So that is uh, the blade pen. The blade pen, the, how the size of it is based on the ropes or lines on the ship. So it would be, generally it's equal to the the diameter of the largest rope that your ship uses. So if you're on a tiny one, your belay pins would be smaller. If you're on a great man of war that had bigger lines, then your belay pins would be larger. But that is sort of how, uh, you know, how and why of belay pins and pirates. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. All right. All right, so we see we have this fine gentleman. See, he's, uh, it's designed for gorilla arms, unless you um, put the buttons on. The elbow. So yes, pirate, you know, the whole puffy sleeve. So this is actually the shirt that Seinfeld wanted to wear, but they only had cheap polyester back then. And now we have this 
nice court shirt that would do him justice. All right, so now he's got puffy puffy and he put his bowl there. So, and then we want to check this should be running a bit high waisted. And then we come to the back and we're gonna tighten this up just a tad bit. All right, so everything fits right. Yes, the bottom, good. we have uh, ties that we want to tie. All right, and now we're going to put waistcoat through. So, you can, you have two choices. You can wear it. Um, open, but if you want it more formal, you would close off the button. Tiger moved inside. All right. And go ahead and tie that. So these are a little wide, so we're going to go ahead and button these. And I'm going to loosen the back so that. And so this allows air ventilation through the back on those hot summer nights. What is the difference between a jabot and a cravat, sir? Well, the jabot has got three segments that ties around, while the cravat is like one long, like a modern day tie that wraps around, and then you have the two segments going. So it's just a, a different variation. Okay. okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a sash to that. And I think we're going to go with this black. And this, this fabric is the same fabric that is on the racing stripes. Hold that there. Is that a water taffeta? It's the so, okay, so this is the Merchant Man uh, sash that is made of uh, a water taffeta. It is a blend of uh, rayon and cotton. And every time we put a sash, we always like to put it up. And then we always make sure that one of the tails goes underneath the belt and one goes over the belt. And there we're taking a black bandana, putting it Tying this right behind one ear in a square knot where the tails of his uh, bandana are on the same side as the tails of his sash. Then here we are adding a fabric called Aldrich. That is the same matching material. The, most people are familiar with the leather sword baldrics, but you know, 
it's good in the rugged times, but sometimes you want something comfortable and fancy, and this uh, works really well. Now, you have two options here. Normally, you know, with fancy, you might want to wear a coat, but we're going to try something different. Instead of matching a coat with this uh, cork waistcoat, we're going to do something that, you know, is a little more dashing, but a coat is always appropriate to finish it off. But what we have here is a cloak. This is the dark weather cloak. I just put it over. It's over like this. So, there are a few ways to wear this. You can wear it open like this, but, or you can wear it over one shoulder. Your right hand is that one. So we want to keep the right hand free in case you want to wield your sword. So here, I'm gonna grab the leather strap and attach it to this other uh, strap on that. So then that allows a more swashbuckling look. Now we're going to finish that off with the hat. All right, why don't you give it a spin? Nice. Very nice. All right, so that is a lovely uh, outfit that would be befitting of any pirate ball or formal occasion. And then you could just flip that over your shoulder. Our wielded for us, yar. Very nice. All right, so 